Welcome to Something More, everyone. I'm your host, Donna Chavis, and today we're going to be talking about soul ties. What are they? How are they formed? Are they good or are they bad? We are talking with Dr. Hakeem Collins. Hakeem, wow, so nice to have you with us. Thanks for having me again. I'm excited to be here again. Well, you know what? You have a brand new book out that is called Unseen Warfare. So before we dig into our topic specifically mm -hmm. today, I would love to hear, what do you mean when you say unseen warfare? What does that mean? Yeah, unseen warfare is basically another term that I use for invisible, of course. And so we have an unseen warfare or unseen or invisible battle that is going on in the invisible realm or things that are happening that we do not see with our natural eyes. So I use that, that term unseen warfare to give the believers and those who read the book a more of a practical understanding of what's happening in the spiritual realm, that there's, there's always something happening if you see something going on in the natural, it's only an indication of what's going on in the spiritual. So I equip people to discern and to disarm and defeat the works of the enemy. So that's Ooh. what the book is for, to help Wow, people. wow. You even said, I, re I remember us talking and you were saying, uh, you know, if you see something in the natural, you know, a fight, a, 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 a gang, mm -hmm. a riot, uh, you know, an abuse or something like mm -hmm. that, that could be an indication of what's going on in the unseen realm as well. How do we pray into that? What do we what do we do? So when God gives you that ability to recognize, which is why I said to discern, discern is basically yes. to recognize what's happening in the natural realm, but get you an understanding or comprehending what's happening in the spiritual. So what I see, if I see gang activity or drug mm -hmm. activity in a territory, my assignment in that territory is to pray the opposite, to pray that there will be exposure, there will mm -hmm. be proper arrest to pray that there is safety, all those things. So just praying God's will into that particular territory is my assignment as an intercessor or a minister of the gospel. So I just love this. You're saying that, that sometimes we'll see clues as to what is happening in the unseen world. Mm -hmm. And so that's when we start. I just, you know, your book, Un the you know, Unseen Warfare. Yes discern, disarm, and defeat yes. the works of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And those works we don't always see, which is one of our topics today. I know you really explore this, and I don't, I don't really hear a lot about this mm -hmm. um, in the church, but we're talking about soul ties. What is that? Well, soul ties is something we don't really see the term of the word soul tie in the mm -hmm. Bible, but the practice of it, the um, demonstration of it, it's mm -hmm. in the Bible. And what it basically is, it is a knitting of two hearts or like a tie, like someone ties a knot. And so it's a mutual, or how it's formed, is a mutual agreement. The, one party cannot establish a soul tie. It's just like you cannot tie your shoes with your one hand. You need yeah. two hands. So you need two parties to make an agreement. And so we understand that the soul is the seat of our mind, will, and emotions. And so it takes two individuals, two parties to form it. Mm -hmm. And so how you form it is number one, intimately. Mm -hmm. sexually mm -hmm. is one way you can establish a soul tie. Then you have contractual, things that are signed, things that is between two organizations, two parties, so two individuals. So possibly a business or a, business. a partner or Absolutely. Kind of mm -hmm. And then you have verbally. There's, you know, we have relationships that we are established based off of what we say to each other. We can establish a good partnership, friendship, camaraderie. Um, and so, but it's what the soul tie entails. There can be healthy ones or there can be unhealthy ones. Uh -huh. There can be bad ones. There can be good ones. There can be good or bad, ungodly, godly. So it's all based on how the soul tie is formed and established. Okay, you know what, we're gonna look at both of these, but first, tell me, um, what is an ungodly or a negative soul tie? What, what does that do to somebody? What? The negative or illegal uh, soul tie, or what I call illicit ones, can be established where it's not God-ordained. So if someone goes out and have sexual relationship with someone or multiple partners um, and outside of marriage, if it's not your married, married spouse or your spouse that you're to marry, then it will become an illegal or illicit or ungodly soul tie because that's not 
what God says in his word. And so there are many type of relationships, not just sexually, that is not God, but there's partnership that God never ordained. There's right. friendship right. that God never ordained. And so what it can do to you, it can be very health, unhealthy, um, basically by how it was formed. So oftentimes, if you connect with someone that is toxic and you build or establish an unhealthy relationship with that person and you don't even know they're unhealthy or they're toxic, mm -hmm. because of the nitty of the soul and the agreement, then they can control you yeah. based off of that relationship. Yeah. In other words, yeah. I look at it as Pinocchio. You know, Pinocchio is on these strings right. and he has a puppet master. And so these strings is controlling um, Pinocchio's movement. And if you are in an unhealthy relationship or a toxic relationship or ungodly relationship, then because it's a soul tie, the soul is your mind, will, and emotion, that person can become your puppet master in the yeah. spiritual realm and control you emotionally, can manipulate your movements, and you don't even know it. And so that's why God wants us to cut those strings mm -hmm. um, and those attachments. But God does want us to have covenant relationships, mm -hmm. godly relationships, godly um, soul ties and friendships and, and marriage. So there can there can definitely be both. I wanted to yes. go back to the negative just for a moment and and you use the word bondage. Mm -hmm. If you're in a a negative soul tie situation, mm -hmm. there's a bondage that is there. I mean it it could make you feel you know what what if you have a friend that you're hanging out with that is constantly bringing you down or you always leave feeling bad or you feel bound up to like go along with things or mm -hmm. whatever i mean uh, there, there's a bondage there that we should not feel if we're in a healthy relationship, isn't there? Absolutely. I mean, there can be a disagreements in healthy relationships mm -hmm. or connections, yeah. but when it starts manipulating and controlling your emotions and how you feel or your thought patterns or your, mm -hmm. how you feel concerning or you walk away, mm -hmm. it's unhealthy mm -hmm. and God is giving you an indication of it. Use the word bondage, which I use yeah. the word, but, but we look at it, it's bond. When there's a connection, there's a bond. <sighs> Yes. But then yes. if it's unhealthy, then it becomes bondage mm -hmm. and or it can be an entanglement. Mm -hmm. And so God wants to unravel and uncoil those things that is not God, mm -hmm. those relationships that he did not ordain and those partnerships and give us a healthy look on his perspective on right relationships. When I think about Jonathan and David, yeah. see, people have perverted that scripture concerning um, in first Samuel, chapter 18, verse one, it talks about that, that Jonathan. Jonathan's heart or his soul was knitted to David's, right? Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. and he said he loved him like his self. Right. That wasn't that he was in love with um, David. He loved him like his self or he loved him like he was his brother. Yeah. And I think oftentimes we have to understand that there are good relationships and there are ungodly ones, but God wants us to establish like those Jonathan and David type relationships that are great. You talk about the difference between a battle buddy a good a battle buddy mm -hmm. that'll go into the fight with you and what you were talking about the puppet master mm -hmm. talk about a little bit about the difference between those yeah when you think about in, in the military they have or they will put you together with is considered a battle buddy you so do I'm, training like that when I you, do. Do the, you do a training yeah, program like that I do and I just teach people in the boot camp to have a partner mm -hmm. with someone that is like a battle buddy mm -hmm. a, a friend someone that will go the war with you yeah. You know, I have a twin and that's my battle buddy because this person or my brother be considered a prayer partner. Someone that is God ordained that can connect hearts, like mind, like passions, and together you can war and defeat the enemy. The Bible says one can chase a thousand, but two, two can chase 10,000. Yeah. If we can understand that partnership and that knitting of the heart and that soul tie, which is healthy, then we can win spiritual battles all the time. As compared to the uh, puppet master, you have someone that's on the other end controlling your emotions and your feelings and calls you to, why are you thinking the way you're thinking? Why are you yeah. experiencing what you're experiencing? Because they're in control. And God wants us to detach from those that it has control exactly. over. God is in control, not the individual. And then we have control over our faculties and our heart to yes. guard our heart yes. and to have a discerning heart of what is right and what is wrong. Yes. Well, let's talk 
talk a little bit about symptoms. Mm -hmm. If if you're like, oh, I don't know, I, I do, uh, you know, I have these relationships, you know, what if somebody is in a negative soul tie situation? Mm -hmm. What are some of the symptoms that they, they might be experiencing? I'm glad you asked, Donna. You know, it's just like what I call them is after effects mm. or symptoms mm. when you leave a person or you come out of a, a, a toxic relationship. Just because yeah. you left a toxic relationship or unhealthy relationship yeah. does not mean that it automatically causes that relationship or that soul tie to detach mm. or to con mm. disconnect. Even You even use the word withdrawals. It's like... You know, all of a sudden, I, I'm feeling out of control here. That's what are some of the, the symptoms? The of symptoms, withdrawal? yeah, withdrawal. It's symptoms where it's like you're visualizing you. This person is constantly on your mind. Um, it's it's causing you to have emotional uh, mood swings, yeah. and you're wondering why you're experiencing that because again, they become the puppet master. They can be in L.A. and you can be in Charlotte, North Carolina, even though distance will not separate you because that soul tie has not been a dis detached. You have withdrawals, mm -hmm. and you're wondering why you're going through these changes and emotional changes because it's, mano it's man emotional manipulation, in other yes. words. Yes. And so you have visions, you have dreams. Um, if somebody brings their name up, you're you're kind of mm -hmm. feeling some type of way about that person. It's because it is still there, it's still established, and even time can make a soul tie unhealthy or a good one stronger. And so we have to look at time, we have to look at all those things, and how you form it is how you can destroy it. Yeah. Whew. Let me do this real quick. I was reading your book, and you have a list of these symptoms that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And because there are so many, I don't expect <laughs> you to remember all of them right off the bat. But if we've got people that are watching right now, and they hear themselves in any of this, then I want to make sure that they mm -hmm. stay tuned for the answer. Um, so some of the symptoms, what a person feels, thinks, is emotionally moved by when a relationship ends is what you called withdrawals, and the symptoms can impact your mind, your will, and your emotions. emotions. Some of the symptoms you mentioned, imaging, visualizing, actually even thinking you hear or see the person in your head, mm -hmm. attitudes, mood swings, memories, stalking, Stalk. obsessive thoughts, pondering, fantasizing, dreaming, secrets, lust, desires, one can be emotionally, mentally, financially traumatized, traumatized. by these negative yeah. soul ties. Wow, when I read through that, I was just like, Lord Jesus. <laughs> so I want you to know that as Hakeem is teaching us, ungodly soul ties can be established by our decision, but just like that, breaking these soul ties can also be done by our decision to be free. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to Something More. I'm Donna Chavis, and I am here with Dr. Hakeem Collins. We are talking about soul ties. Hakeem, we've been talking about the effects of negative soul ties, ungodly soul ties, people we are connected with that are, are leading us into bondage. So what do we do to guard our hearts against this? Well, one of the things you have to do is set boundaries. Oh, yeah. You have to set limitations, and you have to discern um, the right people mm. that will invade your space. You have to make sure that you set up a preventative uh, protection, spiritually mm -hmm. speaking, mm -hmm. when people come. I mean, you have to vet people. I mean, if you go to the airport, they vet you. You have to go yeah. through a, a screening process, a scanner. Um, so in the spiritual uh, aspect of it, you have to do the same thing. It set those uh, boundaries. And then also, you want to make sure you, ha you're, you're, you have the Word of God. You have to make sure that you know what God is saying concerning you and the relationship you are establishing, because oftentimes, if it's not God's 
person that he's put in your life, then oftentimes you'll you'll be in a different direction. So I believe those are the two mm -hmm. things that you should be able to um, do. Yeah. So seek God in our and relationships. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And set boundaries. Are these boundaries something that you have thought about and set up and determined in your heart with the Holy Spirit leading that, yes, if I'm going to enter into a relationship, these are my boundaries. Is this something you do ahead of time so it doesn't catch you off guard? Um, yes, I can say that I do that ahead of time, but oftentimes people can slip through the cracks. Mm. Um, that's where discernment comes in. That's where Holy Spirit will begin to give you intel concerning people. And it's not to really expose them, but also to give the Father's perspective. You know, maybe this person may need help. This person may need healing. They, this person may be crying out. They may be toxic or unhealthy, but they, they may need healing. They may need, The only way they can experience Jesus is through us. So it's also still discerning and seeking God about everything but also having a listening ear that this person may not, yeah. you know, sometimes you can be paranoid and because of hurt in past relationships, it can create walls and you don't want to trust people. Mm -hmm. And so you won't let them in. There's nothing wrong with setting boundaries and limitations, sure. but you want to also have the heart of the father because this person may not really want to have some relationship with you. They may just need some direction or a prophetic word or a healing or just prayer. So we have to always still be sensitive to the Holy Spirit concerning just people in general. You know, when I was reading that list earlier and when I was studying this, uh, oh, I hate to admit this, you know, I, I'm a Christian lady. I'm a believer. I, I am a strong believer, mm -hmm. but I saw myself in a few of those mm -hmm things, mm -hmm. you know, the attitudes, and, and I'm like, whoa, you know what, God, I did have an unhealthy, negative mm -hmm. tie to a person that was causing me to react this way. Absolutely. And I, you know, I just, I just prayed and I said, you know what, I need to follow these steps myself. So I'm thinking that there's probably a lot of people watching that saw or heard themselves when we read that list right there. Absolutely. So you have developed some steps that, that we can follow. Two questions. Mm -hmm. Can we break the soul ties? And how do we break the soul ties according Absolutely. to the steps you outlined? We sure can. And God has given us a blueprint through his word. See, soul ties, the same way that it was established through our decisions is the same way we can actually break them. And so soul ties can be broken. And so one of the steps that I've given people in my book is number one, you have to acknowledge and mm. confess that a soul tie does exist. Isn't that hard for us sometimes yeah. to actually yeah. acknowledge something? Mm -hmm. Why is that? I say, Jesus, why is that? But it is. So yeah. that's huge, isn't it? I think it's very um, imperative that we understand that and get that revelation because, you know, confession is needed and we get healed when they're, when we confess. I believe in this season that even many of you that are watching right now, that God wants you to be honest with yourself, that you may be in a, a toxic relationship, an unhealthy relationship, something that is causing your emotions to get the best of you. Mm. But I come to declare to you, and I want to touch and agree with you right now, because the Bible says in Amos 3.3, 3, it says, how can two walk unless they agree? And so we want to break every ungodly agreement, every connection, and we want to detach you and uncool you and unravel you from everything that was tried to cause you to move in a different direction. So Father, I pray that everything that is not like you be detached and broken and severed in Jesus' name, and that you will give them the courage and the boldness and the prophetic word to know that this is a season that there will be right relationships at the right time in the right season in Jesus name. Yes. Yes. So you were talking about by our decisions mm -hmm. we enter in and by our decisions we can break them as yeah. well. The second point, the second step that you had listed and teach people, we have to actually choose mm -hmm. to end this negative relationship, what does that look like? So what that looks like is if me and you had a, a, a connection or a relationship and just say it went toxic, it went I can't even imagine can't. that, but you can go ahead. But just, you know, yeah. just use an example, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, it's just, but I will have to be, I have to make a decision to call you Donna yeah. and have a real conversation and really just communicate because again, it started mm. that way. Yeah. And how to break it is to be honest with that person that you have established relationship and say, this is the time to, you know, I just need 
need to move on. We need to move in a different direction mm -hmm. and be honest because, again, it's confession that it, it went toxic. It was right. unhealthy. Right. And I believe this is the best for the both of us. And so and then you can just pray for them or bless them or if they don't want that, then as long as you have that conversation that you're cutting that off, that you're detaching yourself from that and you still want to bless them sure. and, best, and bless them in any way. I love that. I don't want to move too past. To, I don't want to move too fast past that part of it when you said, OK, look, I'm ending this relationship. This is not good for me. I'm, you know, feeling a little bound up here. But you say you can pray for them and even fast and, and, and pray that they would be blessed. Yes. See, we have to pray for those that use us and we have to bless those that curse us. And so it's still releasing and activating the word of God, even when a relationship does not work out mm -hmm. or there's a disagreement or it just it's not the right mm -hmm. connection. Right. And so we can just pray and fast and break that soul tie, break that 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 relationship because even at times you may not be able to connect with that person, reach out to that person. Mm -hmm. You know, changing your phone number and blocking them <laughs> doesn't work. You have to do spiritual yeah. work and do spiritual battle and fight for your soul and and break it. See, there's soul ties, but there's also you have relationships that you're looking for your soul mate. So it's real Mm -hmm. where we just have to make sure we have that conversation. And if you can't have that real life conversation one-on-one, -on -one, then you can yeah, pray about yeah. it and do it. Now, when we were talking about the negative, you, we mentioned visualizing mm -hmm. and imagining mm -hmm. things like that. But you said in the process of breaking, when we choose to break, one of the things that you, that you do mm -hmm. and that you found work, you visualize, but this is in a good spiritual realm, you visualize mm -hmm actually cutting or breaking. Absolutely. Forward. I believe in prophetic acts. Mm -hmm. And so God does it in the word of God. He has prophets do it. Yeah. And so what I will find is that I will visualize a, literally a cord. I visualize it, mm -hmm. a cord of that attachment. And then I will take my hand like a, a battle axe or like a scissors. I don't want to do that, but, <laughs> but just a scissors yeah. or a battle axe. And I, and I, and God will give me that person's name yeah. or give me that individual's name or the relationship or partnership or the business, whatever yeah. connection that it was yeah. toxic, I would take my hand and I would cut, I would see myself cutting the cord mm -hmm. and it will break. And oftentimes how you know that it works, Donna, is that two days, three days, a month or so later, you'll start seeing those same people that you visualize and you have name or intel concerning, they will try to come back because mm -hmm. they felt something. They don't know, yeah. but something was detached. Yeah. They come back to try to reestablish mm -hmm what was cut off. They don't know right. why it was cut off, right. but now they're coming, you're coming into their mind and it's like, yeah. I want to reestablish. They start, they start looking out for yeah. you and looking for you. Let's look at step three. This is the one where I saw myself in it when I was reading these, uh, this list, this extensive list. And then I got to these steps on how to break this and how mm -hmm. to, uh, how to move on in victory. Step number three, forgive. Mm -hmm. Wow, how important is that? How important and how powerful it is because oftentimes when we're hurt mm. and we're going through pain or trauma yes. or just disappointment and failures with yes. someone we have a relationship with, it's kind of like we hold on to it. I don't want to let it go. I don't want to. But forgiveness basically, or to forgive is really, it means to let it go. Yeah. And so it's to detach. And so you have to forgive yourself for the decision you made, but also forgive that person that may have hurt you or harmed you. It's better to forgive and let it go than to hold on to it. Yes. And the enemy knows that if you don't forgive, then it will jeopardize your ability to even make it into heaven. So I believe even those who are watching, God wants to release forgiveness and pardon those who may have did harm to you. They may have upset you. I believe this is the season that forgiveness will be released and the anointing of mercy will be released. And you'll have the ability and the power to sever every disconnection, um, the power to begin to cut off things that are not uh, of God or diabolical. And you'll have your freedom and breakthrough in that. Yes. Hakeem, the very last one. Let me let me just get this in here. I know we've only yeah. got a couple of minutes left, but it's time to clean house, right? Mm -hmm. What do we do? Fourth one. Basically, just remove all the paraphernalia, yeah. whether it's gifts, whether it's cars, whether it's clothing, anything that is that is connected to that person or that individual. You have to remove it. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to get rid of it, clean house, because those things will be reminders yeah. of your past or that relationship. So just remove them and you'll see things be free and cleared up. Yeah. Let's take this last few seconds and yeah. just I would love for you to pray for everyone that they would just rise up. Yeah and be able to release and break any ungodly soul ties that might be in their lives and experience 
freedom. Yes, Father, I come to you right now and I pray for those who are watching right now that we break and detach ourselves from every stronghold, every strong man. And so, Father, I ask that you will come with a supernatural broom and sweep away everything that is not like you in our house or in our space, spiritually speaking. Father, I pray that this is an hour that we remove every paraphernalia, every yes. item, everything yes. that is connected to the relationship that we had with the past. And so, Father, I pray that you will release healthy, great, and godly anointed relationships like never before in this next season in yes. Jesus' mighty yes. name. Yes, yes. It's good to be free, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining us, and thank you all for joining us again for something more. We'll see you next time. Call now and get Hakeem Collins' brand new must-read book, Unseen Warfare, and his anointed three-part audio CD teaching, Building Your Personal Firewall, plus his bonus bookmark, The Warfare Prayer of Protection. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9794. Are you tired of wrestling with the devil and his constant attacks and mind games from the unseen world? It's time to discern, disarm, and destroy the works of the enemy. Hakeem Collins' brand new book, Unseen Warfare, is a powerful spiritual warfare manual that will help you gain a deeper understanding of spiritual warfare and its impact on your daily life. Grow in the spiritual gift of discernment to detect places in your life where the enemy is at work. Learn how to walk in the fullness of your spiritual authority to destroy the works of the devil. Apply the rules of engagement to win the spiritual battle you face every day. Break free from ungodly soul ties, generational curses, and harmful patterns from your past. Hakeem incorporates prophetic impartation, powerful prayers, and activations. You will also receive Hakeem Collins' anointed three-part audio CD teaching, Building Your Personal Firewall. Hakeem includes three powerful messages that will teach you how to build a spiritual firewall to identifying and defeating the devil's attacks. Strengthen and upgrade your firewall by learning to access angelic assistance. With these tools and the impartation you will receive, you will begin to walk in victory every day. Plus, you will get Hakeem's bonus bookmark, The Warfare Prayer of Protection. Hakeem includes a personalized prayer for protection and a powerful declaration for angelic assistance. Don't miss out on getting Hakeem Collins' brand new must-read book, Unseen Warfare, and his anointed three-part audio CD teaching, Building Your Personal Firewall, plus his bonus bookmark, The Warfare Prayer of Protection. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9794. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina 28278. Please specify offer number 9794 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today.